Can PRP restore my thin premenopausal hair? I am 54 years old. After menopause, my thick, textured hair became thin and flat. I tried Rogaine because the direction said it could possibly restore previous texture. I stopped Rogaine due to blood pressure dropping when I used it. I have taken Viviscal without benefit. Thank you for your question. You submitted your question without a photo, and you're asking if PRP can restore the hair quality uh, that was there prior to menopause. And you describe in the details of your question that you're 54 years old and that your hair after menopause has become thin and flat. And further, you describe applying the use of Rogaine, uh, which resulted in some blood pressure issues. Well, I can certainly assist you in understanding how we treat patients like yourself every day in our practice. A little bit of background, I'm a board-certified cosmetic surgeon and fellowship-trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years. I'm also the founder of Trichostem Hair Regeneration Centers. This is a system that evolved from performing hair transplant surgery using regenerative medicine technology, and we have made a significant impact in the treatment of female pattern hair loss. We've been doing this for over eight years, and I'll describe for you some of the challenges uh, of, of your situation and how we manage problems like yours every day, as I mentioned earlier. So to begin with, it is important to understand that Although it's commonly understood that there is male pattern hair loss beginning at a very early age, one of the areas that has been underserved is female pattern hair loss. And it is a generally accepted statistic that 30% of women under the age of 50 and 50% of the women over the age of 50 will have female pattern hair loss. And although it is important to certainly recognize that the effect of estrogen being diminished after menopause commonly has an impact on hair growth, it is also important to understand that this condition is often referred to as androgenetic alopecia, which means genetic pattern hair loss. And what happens with androgenetic alopecia is the numbers of hairs slowly diminish, the hair slowly becomes thinner, or as you described, flatter as well, and eventually it progresses until the hair continue, the volume of hair diminishes. And hair scalp coverage is a function of both the number of hairs as well as the thickness of the individual hairs. Now, when we were first doing this treatment called hair regeneration, which we developed using platelet-rich plasma and a material called acellular matrix, we were first using this for male pattern hair loss in, this, in the context of hair transplant surgery. A very pleasant side effect was seen, which was that thinning hair became thicker. Now, although PRP was part of this formulation at the time, it was very important that we recognize that acellular matrix made a big impact. Now, in the early years, back in 2011, 2012, when we were first presenting preliminary results, which were fairly dramatic for both male and female pattern hair loss, there was a lot of skepticism in the medical community, particularly amongst hair transplant doctors and dermatologists. Well, we persisted on uh, developing this, and over the course of many years, we've essentially developed a system, a system based on certain key elements of a person's, what we refer to as a hair loss profile. And that includes gender, age, age of onset of hair loss, rate of progression, degree of progression, and other medical treatments that have been applied. We have patients with female pattern hair loss as young as 16 and 18 years old. And we've treated patients with female pattern hair loss well into their 70s. Currently, there has been a significant growth in awareness 
about the benefits of PRP, both in the medical literature and now in clinical practice. The distinction that I would make is that at the level that PRP is being offered currently is essentially a what I describe commonly as a, as a shotgun approach. Basically, there is certainly established some benefit with PRP for the treatment of hair loss, but the challenge is, is sustaining the treatment in a way that will be effective. A lot of my colleagues are offering treatments once a, once a month, once every two to three months. And I find that a lot of patients who come to us find that very difficult to sustain and are often challenged by seeing the relative benefits. In fact, current opinion amongst my colleagues is that PRP works 50% of the time. Well, in our practice, when we've de what we've developed with hair regeneration and that we ultimately uh, expanded into Trichostem hair regeneration centers is formulations and systems based on those parameters I described earlier. Generally speaking, we treat patients like yourself where we do a treatment and then somewhere around 15 to 18 months later we'll do another treatment. Between the two treatments, we've been able to sustain improvement for several years after even a single injection alone. Consistently female pattern hair loss patients have Im seen improvement in quality and quantity of hair. On average, we see improvements around nine to 10 months, but we can see improvements occurring as early as one to three months, but it's, it's an ongoing process without the need for multiple injections. Essentially one treatment followed by what we refer to as the booster treatment around 15 to 18 months. We follow our patients very closely, so we've learned every three to six months of observation, we've been able to establish systems and processes that reflect the various types of hair loss, even within the broad category of female pattern hair loss. Now, as far as the progression of hair loss, it's very important to understand that hair loss is basically a genetic, it's a genetic program. And therefore, what we're doing is we're manipulating the environment of the hair and we're stimulating growth. Basically, we're reactivating hair that isn't growing, thickening, thinning hair, and prolonging the lifespan of the hair that by nature of androgenetic alopecia, the lifespan gets shorter, or what's known as the antigen phase of the growth cycle. So at this point, certainly uh, I can also support the, the, um, the issue with the Rogaine, where a lot of people do report uh, blood pressure issues. What we've generally done is, if someone hasn't been on Rogaine or has just started using it, we don't, need, we don't usually recommend it as part of a long-term strategy. When we do this treatment, basically they, instead of losing hair, people gain hair and we are able to sustain that growth for several years. Again, based on eight years of data from patients that we've been treating from all over the world. So at this point, I think that the question to, that, to explore is not so much can you get your premenopausal hair, but how does a treatment strategy using this regenerative medicine technology can help you manage this progression and maximize coverage for a longer period of time? There may be some value in exploring th um, concepts such as hormone replacement therapy, but that is contingent on the relative risk you may have for um, estrogen, uh, estrogen stimulated uh, malignancies, whether it's breast cancer or uterine cancer, but that's a question to explore with your medical doctor. So th at this point, it is, it, it, I would advise that you meet with qualified doctors who have extensive experience with platelet-rich plasma, platelet-rich plasma with extracellular matrix, learn about that individual doctor's experience and see their before and afters. I think it's very, very important to recognize that a lot of doctors 
are, have, don't have a lot of experience in this area and are just getting into this. And of course, it is important. You know, we all started somewhere. We, do, we, did, we started this eight years ago, and it took us a lot of time, a lot of work, and a lot of analysis to get to where we are now. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for your question. Thank you.